in this fight at Women's Strawweight, we have a couple of fighters looking to rebound off of a loss in one case and a couple of losses in the other as the Spider Monkey. Ashley Oders taking on Danger Miranda Granger. And I'm really excited about this fight because Ashley Yoder's record might not be the best out there. A little salty at 7-6, and six, but she does have some nice wins on that record. And if we have a look at it, there's a few that, you know, maybe you scratch your head. But in her last five, three and two, she lost a split to Mackenzie Dern. She was competitive Very in that fight. fight. Then she won two more. Amanda Bobby Cooper, losing record. But look into it. I mean, I hate Eddie Bravo you, but you got to look into it and have a look at the level of competition that she faced in her run in the UFC. She beat Siri Kondo, no longer in the UFC. Lost a split decision to Randa Marcos. Had a really nice head and arm throw in that one against a good wrestler. We talked about that in this playlist. Of course, Randa Marcos on this card in uh, or on short notice. And then she lost to Lavinia Souza, who was coming off a long layoff. But there was one point in time where, honestly, I thought Lavinia Souza was like that next at 115 pounds. I don't think that's crazy to say. But she lost that fight, and it was all Souza. For Miranda Granger, former CFFC champion, we've seen a lot of CFFC yeah. fighters have success. I mean, look at the Dawkins brothers recently. Look at... Other fighters. No, I'm just kidding. But there have been a lot of success stories. And oh, by the way, sometimes CM Punk commentates their events. Now, I look at this fight and it's very interesting because these fighters are very close in terms of style. You look at this. I mean, 5'7 for Ashley Oder. She's normally bigger and longer than a lot of fighters at straw weight. Miranda Granger is actually going to be very, very closely matched in this one. So, it's one of those things that Yoder never really has to go up against long, rangy opponents in the UFC. There's been a lot of wrestlers. There's been some strikers. She's had success against both. For Miranda Granger, I go back and watch her first fight when she came into the UFC. Gets a win over Hannah Goldie. Really stymied Goldie's attack. And if you watched a lot of Hannah Goldie fights, she's very volume heavy. She can land some power. Miranda Granger just popping off those combinations. The double jab lands a nice right hand. She can throw some kicks. She can pressure her opponents. For Ashley Yoder, we know that her kickboxing is good. She has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt. Both of these fighters are kind of like carbon copies of each other. And to use a Mike Goldberg impression, it's basically C.B. Dalloway taking on C.B. Dalloway. I really like this matchup stylistically. I think it's one of the better ones that you can make for both of these fighters. What do you think about this one? So I do think this will be a really fun fight, and mainly because it is going to be what you said. It's going to be basically a showcase of could you beat yourself if you shadow box in front of a mirror for 15 minutes? Because Miranda Granger, you look at kind of her skill set, and it doesn't really apply the same way that Ashley Yoder's does. Ashley Yoder should be probably a little bit more grappling heavy than Miranda Granger is, but Yoder really relies on that volume, her reach, her length in the division. And I do think it's important to mention now, she's never never had to fight using that style to really use her height and reach as an advantage because it does seem like in most of Yoder's fights she's defending takedowns and trying to get off whatever strikes she can in the meantime with Granger I do feel like Miranda Granger fights like a five foot seven straw weight whereas Ashley Yoder fights like a straw weight who happens to be five foot seven I do think that's a very important uh, distinction between the two because Ashley Yoder isn't the best at using her range she can kind of she gets Stefan Struve sometimes where people can come in on her. She has a really hard time finding the range. Now, I doubt she went to the Brian Ortega elbow camp because Brian Ortega came out and said that. He was like, my first, you know, so many UFC fights, I was having a really hard time punching people because I'm so big for the division. People are closing the distance. But if I just use elbows, I can meet them halfway and it's going to be a lot more damaging. If Ashley Yoder could do that, I'd be like, wow, Ashley Yoder going places. But we haven't really seen that evolution in her game, at least as of late. She is a good grappler, so I'm sure some of that is. She kind of welcomes the takedown because unless your name's Mackenzie Dern, you're probably going to be in some tricky situations on the ground with Yoder. But Miranda Granger, what she do well? Well, she's got really good volume striking from a distance, very similar, excuse me, to Ashley Yoder. Her power, though, I will say Granger has the power advantage out of the two. It just seems like she sits down on her shots a little bit more. And if she is able to get, she does have a really nice double jab into a straight right. Another thing Stefan Struve hasn't done in about 10 years in the UFC, although he's seven feet tall. But she does have really good boxing combinations. And she uses her range. Because you can tell, when she's throwing a punch, she's fully expecting the end of her range to hit her opponent. She's not trying to throw inside of her own comfortable range. And I do think that's a very, it's a good sign that you're a really high level striker when you have that level of control over your own body. Now for Miranda Granger, undefeated going into her last fight against Amanda Lamos. And if you want to see something that's absolutely insane, that woman made it from 135 pounds to 115 pounds, took a long time off and got a giant win. And 
Amanda Lemos' jiu-jitsu is very, very slippery and skilled. And you look at that fight for Miranda Granger. She was a favorite at about a minus 190 and ended up losing by first round submission. So she comes back in here. We know what her bread and butter is. It is definitely the striking. She does leave herself open to get hit by some of those looping shots and the power shots. But she definitely is a technical striker. I was a little bit surprised coming into this video seeing that Miranda Granger opened a minus 170 favorite and all of the monies have come in on her opponent in this one. So you look at it, you have Miranda Granger, the line moves uh, towards Ashley Yoder. Yoder at the time opened a plus 145. She's now a minus 117. If we look over at the votes on Tapology Matt, out of 409 total votes, 83% going Granger, 81% predicting her to win by decision. That's how I see it, but I'm a little bit surprised on how those odds are moving. I, I mean, I was when they had first opened. I, I don't think Miranda Granger. I'm really weird this way. I think you need to really justify you deserve to be as much of a favorite as you are. I don't think you can just beat five people in a row and then you deserve to be a two-to-one favorite. I think you really have to go out there and put stamps in your performances to kind of warrant that. Whereas Miranda Granger, it's more a disrespect towards Ashley Yoder, honestly, that they opened the line at that them being even more than fair because like we had said they're basically carbon copies of each other so it's either going to be just ashley yoder out ashley yoder ashley yoder see it's there's a lot going on so i do think though miranda granger she has the power advantage she uses her striking a little bit better in mma so i do think miranda granger will probably be able to pick up a decision win like you had mentioned though she's open to getting hit so as she starts to fight those upper echelon women in the strawweight division something to look out for but i don't think ashley yoder has nearly enough power to make her pay for it in this performance and maybe ashley yoder surprised a lot of people maybe. i mean again the takedowns if they're there and she can get some of that top control in miranda granger we know that ashley yoder is a half decent striker we've stressed that the entire entire video there's definitely an opportunity and method of victory for ashley Oder, but again i'm also siding with miranda granger in this one but i am really looking forward to this fight we both have granger to get the win it's a tricky card i mean the main event's falling out so we'll see what happens up near the top but makachev rda no more you're gonna want to keep it locked in with fight name picks all fight week long as we continue to follow the developments it is an interesting time to be an mma fan we really appreciate you for tuning in so again Hate to ask for it, but toss down the like and the sub and turn the notifications on. That way you know that when that breaking fight news comes out, we have an opportunity to cover it. You can check it out here. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, Matt, as we always say. Let's get into it.